In this series of videos, we're going to talk about relevant costs for decision making. Before we get into it, we're going to learn about five types of decisions uh, in the subsequent five videos. But in this video, I'm just going to talk about relevant costs and what makes a cost relevant or not relevant. So that's the real topic of this video, relevant costs. Again, in the next few videos, we'll go over different types of decisions one might have to make. But here, we just wanted to find what makes a cost relevant versus not. And again, you're thinking about making a decision, a short-term decision for your business, and you've got to decide, okay, which cost should I consider here, and which cost shouldn't I consider in making this decision? And there's really only two criteria you need to worry about. The first criteria is in order to be relevant, the cost cannot be sunk. So if a cost is a sunk cost, it's not relevant to your decision. I have a friend, he owns an old clunker of a car. He's driven it for years and every year it seems like he has to take it into the shop. All the time he's getting it repaired. And I said to him, I said, hey, why don't you just replace the car? You're spending thousands of dollars every year. You're sinking money into this car. Why don't you replace the car? And you know what he said to me? He said, I've already put so much money into it. I don't want to replace it now. I want to get my money's worth out of it. I've already put so much money into it. My friend is using flawed logic. He's letting a sunk cost, this money that he sunk into his car in this case, influence a future decision. No way should a past cost affect a future decision. So that's why we say sunk costs are never relevant to our decision. So again, I want you to remember that. If a cost is sunk, it is not a relevant cost. The next criteria for a cost to be relevant or not relevant, well, it has to be a differential cost if we want it to be a relevant cost. Now, what do I mean by a differential cost? It has to be a cost that's different between my alternatives. Let's say I was contemplating starting a new job and I could either take the job uptown or downtown and there's one job offered to me uptown there's one job offered to me downtown I was debating and there was salaries were roughly the same and then I looked at the rent and the rent was four hundred dollars uptown and six hundred dollars downtown well the fact that the rent is different between the two locations that makes it a relevant cost because it's different between the alternatives now if the rent was five hundred dollars uptown and five hundred dollars downtown it was the same I shouldn't consider rent in my decision at all. I don't need to include, oh, it's 500 here and it's 500 there. No, no, no. I don't even think about the rent if it's the same between the alternatives. So if a cost is different between the alternatives, we consider it. If it's the same between the alternatives, we don't consider it. So those are the two criteria. One, that a cost, in order for it to be relevant, it can't be sunk, and two, it has to be different between the options. You might think, well, what if I'm making a decision but there's only one option? No, 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 there's always at least two options. If you're thinking, oh, I might buy the car. Hmm, okay, so I'm making a decision whether to buy a car. You might say, well, I'm only looking at one type of car, the Toyota Matrix, so that's only one option. No, 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 there's two options. Buy the car, don't buy the car. So whenever we're thinking of our decisions, we're thinking of, the, is it a different cost between my alternatives? So I was thinking about um, buying a pen recently, and I was thinking, I can either go buy the pen at Office Depot, or I can buy the pen at Staples. And I was debating between my two choices. So I had Office Depot on one side, and I had Staples on the other. And I looked, I Googled, I looked on the internet, and I found out their pen price. The price of the pen was two dollars at Office Depot and it was two dollars at Staples. And I also thought about it and, and Office Depot is really close to my house. Staples is a little further away. The cost of the gas would be about 25 cents to get me to Office Depot. It's closer. And about 50 cents to get me to Staples. And finally, of course, if I have a car, I need to have insurance on that car. And the insurance on my car was about $1,000 for the year, so about $3 a day. We'll round. We'll say it's $3 a day to insure my car. 
So the insurance to keep the car running was $3. So I added up the prices, $5.25 at Office Depot, $5.50 at Staples, and of course I went with the cheaper one, $5.25 at Office Depot. And fair enough, you know, that's the total cost of getting the pen, but it's absolutely not the relevant cost for making my decision. Let's think about the relevant cost and let's go through our costs one at a time. The first one is the price of the pen. And let me see if I can change my pen color here. Apparently not. I'll leave it as black. Uh, the cost of the pen, the price of the pen. And the price of the pen is $2 versus $2. It's not different, right? It's not a sunk cost. So if I'm thinking, oh, is it sunk cost? The answer is no, I haven't purchased the pen yet. Absolutely not a sunk cost, but it's not different. So what does that mean to me as a decision maker? It means it's not relevant, right? The cost of the pen is not different. Therefore, I'm not gonna consider that $2 in considering the cost. So it's not 525 in relevant costs. Now, insurance, I could say the same thing about it. It's three versus three, it's the same either way. And so it isn't different, and that would disqualify it. But the other thing is, my insurance is a sunk cost. If I bought the insurance for a thousand bucks at the beginning of the year, and now I'm just, you know, running through my insurance as the year goes on, that three dollars is sunk. It doesn't matter if I go to buy the pen or not. You know, if I go to Office Depot, or if I go to Staples, or if I go nowhere, my insurance is the same. It's a sunk cost. I've already paid for it. So not only is this not differential, it's the same between the alternatives, it's also sunk. That definitely means it's not a relevant cost. So I'm going to scratch that one. What about the gas cost? Is it a sunk cost? Well, I haven't used the gas yet. I haven't gone to the store yet, so I haven't used up that, that cost yet. So I would say it's not sunk yet. Is it different between the alternatives? Absolutely. Well, then the gas cost is really my only relevant cost in this pen purchase. If it's the exact same pen at Office Depot and Staples, it'll make me equally happy regardless of what shop I buy it from. The only difference is the cost of the gas. Well, then I should be going to Office Depot. It's the cheaper of the two options. So although it created the same uh, correct answer when I added up all the costs, 525 uh, versus 550 or 25 cents versus 50 cents, that's not necessarily always going to be the case, as we'll see. We're going to work through five different types of problems dealing with determining what costs are relevant and what costs aren't. Hopefully this was a, a good intro. Again, I want you to remember, there's just two key things you need to remember. In order to be relevant, one, the cost cannot be a sunk cost, and two, the cost must be differential. That's different between my alternatives. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next batch.